Hello, I'm astrologer Mitchell Scott Lewis. We're all concerned about the current financial difficulties that the world is facing, and so I've decided to give you a little background today as to what brought us here. A great alignment is when all of the inner planets, the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, are in one sign at the same time. This is a very rare configuration. Centuries will go by without a great alignment. And yet, in the second half of the 20th century, we had two within 40 years of each other. On February 4th, 1962, all of the inner planets were lined up in the sign of Aquarius. At the beginning of this great alignment, it was a dark of the moon. As you see by the chart here, the moon is three and a half degrees of Aquarius and the sun is 14 and a half degrees. It's before the new moon. Neptune in uh, Scorpio is in square to the sun and Venus and Mercury and Jupiter. Later in the day, when the moon becomes new at 15 and a half degrees of Aquarius, all of these planets are still in this radical sign. So the great alignment is still intact under the new moon. Well, right after the great alignment, we had the Cuban Missile Crisis and Kennedy's assassination, two very dark of the moon type of activities. There was a great deal hidden and buried under the surface. There was no light. Things were dark. But after the new moon, later after uh, Kennedy's assassination came, the era of the hippies and Woodstock, and this shows the new moon experimentation of Aquarius, Aquarius at its, at its best. It's an enlightened sign. It's an experimental and uh, um, curious sign. And the world certainly was curious. Everything changed. So the end result of these two of, these, of this great alignment, but the two parts of it, the dark of the moon and the new moon, show quite succinctly that there were two different parts of the era of the 60s. Now, the second great alignment happened on May 4th of 2000. All of the inner planets were lined up in the more conservative, in fact, the most conservative of signs, Taurus. Taurus is the second sign of the zodiac, so it rules the second house. It has to do with money and values. This began as a dark of the moon as well. You see that the moon is two and a half degrees of Taurus and the sun is 13 degrees of Taurus. But if you look at this other chart, by the time the moon is new at 14 degrees of Taurus, Mars has exited that sign and entered Gemini. The great alignment is no longer intact. This still has a great deal of Taurus energy and anybody born under this, in this day with this configuration would have a lot of Taurus, but it's not the same thing. Gemini, the, the energy of Gemini that Mars created showed that there was a good deal said, but very little meant. The great alignment of May of 2000 is a dark of the moon alignment. And as you can see, everything that has occurred since then has that kind of a feel. The first presidential election of Mr. George W. Bush is shrouded in secrecy and hidden with no light. His administration for eight years has been the same. The Iraqi war has been fought in, in hiding, Guantanamo Bay. So many things are dark of the moon. And because Taurus rules financial matters, as we approached some of the uh, more devastating outer aspects, this dark of the moon great alignment got kicked off. In the next little segment, what I'm going to talk about is what led us directly to this financial collapse, the Saturn-Neptune opposition, and then what we're going through today, through July of 2010, the five passes of Saturn opposite Uranus. Now, in the great alignment of 2000, we also had squares. We had Neptune in square to the Moon, Venus, and Mercury, and Uranus in square to Jupiter and Saturn. And that Uranus-Saturn square is very important because now we're dealing with Saturn in opposition to Uranus five times. It completed for the first time on Election Day, which is why I and most astrologers predicted that Obama would win. It's experimentation. It's the past versus the future. It's change.
And what we need now more than anything else is change. Because the Great Alignment was a dark of the moon issue in 2000, we need to bring things to light. And the Saturn-Uranus opposition is doing just that. Unfortunately, it's doing it through catastrophes. And this is the way humanity learns. Rarely do we change until we're in pain. Now the society is in a bit of pain, and so we will deal with this as it moves along. In my next segment, I'll talk to you about Saturn opposite Neptune and why it led to the destruction of the housing market, Saturn's entrance into Virgo and what that meant to the banking industry, and Saturn opposite Uranus, which, like I said before, we're going to deal with until July of 2010.